SJC 11734 and SJC 11736, Justin D'Amato v. Commonwealth. Oh. Okay. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Why don't you wait one moment? We're, we're just receiving. Justin D'Amato is a pro se appellant in matters of 1134 and SJC 11736. Thank you, Okay, if you wait one moment. Okay. Mr. Mot uh, Mr. Mot D'Amato's, this is Chief Justice Gantz. Uh, you may need to speak up a little bit. We can hear you, but not as well as we should. So if you would lift your voice a little bit. And you have 10 minutes, sir. You may proceed. Uh, before we begin, I would like to ask the court if you will address a motion for relief pending the determination of the appeal at the end of the argument. Uh, I'm not quite sure which motion you're referring to, but why don't you argue and we'll deal with that in due course. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I can't hear you. Uh, I'm not sure what motion you're referring to, so why don't you argue your, your case and then you can inform me what you're seeking leave of. But why don't you make sure that you use your time for the argument. Thank you. I'm going to begin with SJC 11736 first, if that's okay. Yes. The issue presented here is whether the trial judge erred in ruling that, in this instance, the substance oxycodone, when possessed in pre-compounded prescription tablets in limited amounts, is a Class B substance. The trial judge... The trial judge does not include any basis of support in his ruling. The record reflects the judgment in brief number 11736, appendix 14A, <coughs> and appendix 43, lines 9 through 12, and appendix 57, lines 5 through 8. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 270, subsection 28, I being incarcerated and thereby aggrieved by the judgment during a criminal proceeding, have appealed to this court. In addition, this instance is extraordinary where it appears the question of law at issue may be a first impression and is duly preserved on the record by the trial judge. I direct the court to brief appendix for SJC 11736, appendix number 57, line 16 and 17, where the trial judge acknowledges the issue of law is preserved. <clears throat> Post-conviction, I filed a motion to request a report pursuant to Mass Rules of Criminal Procedure 34, papers number 59.1 and 68, as listed in the docket entries for SUCR 2011-10099. No action has been taken in these matters. But, Mr. D'Amatos, this is Justice Cordy. Um, you have filed an appeal, and it is a pending in the appeals court. Is that right? Correct. Well, why isn't that your remedy? Why would you come here? I came here because the, the instance is an extraordinary issue. I've addressed this, this issue to the trial court numerous times, and all motions have been denied. Where it's a first impression question of law, and 270, subsection 28, allows for a procedural vehicle to go directly to the SJC. And in reading Mass General Law, Chapter 211, subsection 5, as an appealable question of law, it is within the purview of the full court. Is, that is my understanding. Okay. Ordinarily, appeals go to the appeals court. That's what is provided for in our rules. You've got an appeal there. Do you, are you of the view that this issue will not be fairly litigated and decided at that level? Well, Your Honor, uh, through what I've read in case law, I figured the best avenue for a relief would have been to go directly to this court. Okay, proceed. Um, the trial court acknowledges there is no control and precedent in addressing the issue of whether or not oxycodone is a Class B substance when possessed and pre-compound the prescription tablets in limited amounts. I refer the court to Appendix 56 in the brief for SJC 11736, where the judge indicates there is no, he is unable to, through his research to find any controlling precedent. As I understand through the reading of the statute, Mass General Law, Chapter 94C, Subsection 1, defines pre-compounded prescription tablets containing limited amounts of oxycodone as a prescription drug. I am unable to find anything which refers oxycodone or any of the numerous trade names of the prescription drugs containing oxycodone as listed in appendix 66 on brief in the brief for 11736 within class a b c or d 
The only reference I have been able to find is within Commonwealth versus Figueroa, which is an unpublished decision, and I understand it only con uh, maintains, it, doesn't, it isn't controlling precedent, however, it is persuasive, and that's page 14 on brief number 11736, where it supports that what is uh, one of many trade names for prescription drugs containing oxycodone, Percocet, as a Class E substance. Now I'm going to I'm going to move on to SJC 11734 quickly. Okay. Uh, as far as 11734, again to answer your question of why I I came directly to the SJC rather than go through the appellate process, the record. I'm sorry. I, I should tell you that I should say that there is, with regard to matters of first impression, where parties believe that is the case, there is a way to come directly to the SJC, but that's not through section. That's not through a Chapter 211.3 petition, but that's actually to a, to a motion for direct appellate review. That, that's the usual procedure for coming directly to the SJC from a trial court. What, well, Your, Your what? Honor, in reading, I moved, in, in 11736, I moved pursuant to Mass General Law 278, subsection 28. I'm, I just wonder if I could interject. Uh, uh, Within certainly. Mass General Law 278, subsection 28, it indicates any aggrieved defendant may appeal directly to the Supreme Judicial um, Court. Sir, this is Justice Duffley. I just wanted to direct your attention if perhaps in your research, and uh, you've done a great deal, obviously, you may not have come across another statute, which is Chapter 211A, Section 10, that grants, subsequent to the statute you're referring to, grants to the appeals court concurrent jurisdiction in the circumstance that you're seeking to have us uh, address your claim here. And so you first enter that that's the procedure since the uh, appeals court, which wasn't uh, created until the 70s, but was subsequent to its creation, there's now that concurrent jurisdiction, and you first file there, and then, as the Chief Justice indicated, you could seek direct appellate review from that point. That, that's just a procedural matter that it, you may need to be cognizant of it if you weren't. Well, I appreciate that, Your Honor, but again, in reading some of the cases which I cite in the brief, the, this court has previously indicated that appeal, appeal to the SJC is, is available for matters in errors of law that are apparent on the record. And I, I feel that the filing under 278 subsection 28 in conjunction with the, the cases I support in the brief referring to the support of a question of law on the record, especially being appearing to be a first impression question, would uh, you know, strike the strike the interest of the full court. <clears throat> okay, you've got two and a half minutes, Mr. D'Amato. So, if there's anything else you wish to tell us, please use that time. SJC one one seven three four. Again, I've exhausted numerous remedies. Um, in that instance, uh, I filed revise and revokes and other issues regarding the unlawful sentence. All have been denied. Again. The sentence imposed is contrary to the offense committed rather than the offense charged. And again, I feel that, you know, through the cases I've read and, and the extraordinary relief in this instance would apply here, even though normal appellate review is available as set forth in the brief. Uh, I've cited numerous cases on page three of brief 11734. Additionally, I'm going to cut it short now that you have indicated I only have two minutes left. I would like to address the issue of relief pending the outcome of the appeal in this court, if that is possible. I was, uh, I was under the impression that I would be appearing at the court where it, it was a last minute thing. I was informed that it was going to be a phone conference. I have the material prepared. However, it would have never made it to the court in time to submit it. I was going to hand it in person, but uh, considering that it's a phone conversation rather than in person, uh, I would ask the court to address the issue over the, via phone, and in the event I can follow up with uh, mailing it in. Okay. Why don't, why don't you have you have one minute left? So why don't you argue that, and then you can uh, mail it to the clerk, and we'll consider it as part of uh, your overall case. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't hear the first part of that. All right. Why don't you use your last minute to to argue that, and then you can file it by mail, and then we will consider it with the other two matters. Thank you, Your Honor. Pursue it to uh, Massachusetts. Rules of civil procedure, uh, appellate procedure, I'm sorry, not civil procedure, rule six, 
this court ha and having filed two previous motions to stay execution of sentence and applications for bail pending a pending the appeal have been denied in the lower court this court is uh, able to decide whether or not I can be released pending appeal I suggest that the release pending appeal would adhere in this matter considering that the offense committed versus the offense charged only carries an 18 month house of correction sentence for a violation of mass general law chapter 94c subsection 32 d little b which is what i would have been charged with where i was arrested on november 1st and subsequent to the arrest law enforcement uh seized 700 plus individual pre-compounded prescription tablets containing oxycodone so, so, so in short, your time is up, but what I hear you saying is that you, 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 you say that your sentence would soon be up if you were indeed convicted only of a Class E, and you're seeking a stay of execution because of that. Is that correct? Yes, considering that the sentence for possessing Class E substance is, is already been served. Okay, I understand that. Okay, thank you. I'm afraid your time is up, but we'll, we will await your mailing in to that... Uh, motion for leave to stay, and we'll consider that as part of your other two matters, okay? Thank you. And now we'll hear from Mr. Sears. Good morning, Your Honors. May it please the Court, Matt Sears, on behalf of the Commonwealth. Unless the Court has any specific questions, I'm content to rest on my brief. And hearing none, we thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.